Hello, I am Sakina and welcome to today's lecture. Today I will be talking about categories of substance use disorder and the lecture will cover five major objectives which are first the concept of substance abuse, second psychoactive substances, third difference between substance use and substance abuse, fourth DSM-5 classification of substance use disorders, fifth DSM-5 criteria for substance use disorders. Let us begin by understanding the concept of substance use. A substance can be defined as a chemical compound that has the potential to alter a physical or mental state. According to World Drug Report, 35 million people struggle with substance use disorders and only 1 in 7 people receive the required treatment while the majority of people who use drugs are men. Women use some drug types nearly as much as men and women continue to be underrepresented in drug treatment. Young people continue to use more drugs than adults and have higher levels of use than in past generations. Getting addicted to substances can be fairly easy due to the different kinds of substances varying in potency, accessibility and cost. Cigarettes, marijuana, cocaine, heroin, etc. are the most well-known and prominent drugs. But commonly found substances such as caffeine, generally found in coffee, tea and energy drinks and alcohol in some parts of the world can be easily found in kitchen pantries, used in various dishes as party drinks and beverages, over-the-counter drugs such as painkillers, sedatives and benzodiazepines are the most misused substances and can prove fatal when mixed with alcohol. Inhalants are another example of such substances. Gasoline, paint thinner, fumes and aerosol sprays can also be abused. The accessibility to these substances is undoubtedly a disadvantage for everyone, particularly the vulnerable and uneducated groups. There are important regional and national differences as to which stimulant drug is most used. The reasons for these differences lie in a complex interplay of drug market dynamics and other factors such as norms, social context, etc. According to the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime, there are estimated 209 million users of cannabis 61 million users of opioids, 34 million users of amphetamines, 21 million users of cocaine, 230 million users of tobacco, 93 million of alcohol, and 20 million users of hallucinogens. The most comprehensive and timely data on global deaths attributed to drug use are produced by the Global Burden of Disease Study which estimated that there were 4,94,000 drug-related deaths in 2019. The latest time series indicate an overall increase in total deaths attributed to drugs of 17.5% between 2009 and 2019. Now, let's talk about psychoactive substances. These are the substances that influence how our brain functions exacerbating changes in mood, awareness, thoughts, feelings and behavior such as nicotine, cocaine, heroin, caffeine, ecstasy, opioids, amphetamines, tranquilizers and alcohol. There are several classes of psychoactive substances based on the effects they could have on a person. Stimulants, which are substances which induce activity or relation Depressants, that is substances which induce relaxation. Hallucinogens, which are substances which are alter sensory perception. And opiates, which are substances which reduce pain. The psychoactive substances interfere with the way neurons send, receive and interpret signals through neurotransmitters. Certain substances such as marijuana and heroin 
mimic the natural neurotransmitters and activate neurons while other substances such as cocaine can cause the neurons to release abnormal amounts of neurotransmitters. Let us understand the difference between substance use and substance abuse. Substance use refers to the consumption of substances in moderation which does not interfere with an individual's daily functioning. For example, caffeine consumption in the morning or drinking alcohol on special occasions. While our substance abuse is a pattern of compulsive substance use marked by reluctant significant social, occupational, legal or interpersonal adverse consequences such as repeated absences from work or school, arrests and marital difficulties. It involves a high amount of substance intake which can lead to psychological, social, occupational or health related problems. Now let us learn about DSM-5 classification of substance disorders. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder 5th edition that is DSM-5 by American Psychiatric Association is a comprehensive and reliable manual for the diagnosis of mental disorders. DSM-5 categorizes the substance related disorders into two groups, substance use disorders and substance induced disorders. First we will learn about substance induced disorders. Substance induced disorders are referred to as the immediate effects of substance use or discontinuation on an individual. These include a intoxication which refers to a reversible set of behavior or cognitive symptoms experienced after the recent use or exposure to a substance. For example, lack of judgment, slurred speech, dizziness, poor coordination and hallucinations. B. Withdrawal, which refers to the physiological, behavioral and cognitive symptoms that develop after cessation or sudden cutting down on a substance after prolonged or heavy consumption, such as nausea, vomiting, insomnia, mood alterations and anxiety. C. Other substance or medication induced mental disorders. These are the mental disorders which an individual develops solely as a result of substance use such as psychotic disorders, bipolar and related disorders, depressive disorders, anxiety disorders, obsessive compulsive and related disorders, sleep disorders, sexual dysfunction, delirium and neurocognitive disorders. Now let's learn about substance use disorders. The American Psychiatric Association defines the substance use disorder as a complex pattern of behaviors in which a substance is used uncontrollably despite negative consequences. Earlier, the DSM-4 contained two categories of substance related disorders, substance dependence and substance abuse. The DSM-5 replaced two disorders and combined them into a single category called substance use disorder. These disorders are categorized by excessive use of substances often leading to potentially hazardous behavior. The individual faces a cluster of cognitive, behavioral and physiological symptoms associated with substance use. An individual continues the use of substances even though their use creates significant problems and interferes with the daily functioning of a person. Now we will discuss the DSM-5 criteria for substance use disorders. DSM-5 defines the substance use disorders as a maladaptive pattern of substance use leading to clinically significant impairment or distress manifested by at least two or more of the following criteria occurring within a 12 month period. Number one, the substance is often taken in larger amounts or over a longer period than was intended. Number two, there is persistent desire 
or unsuccessful efforts to cut down or control substance use. Number three, a great deal of time is spent in activities necessary to obtain the substance, use the substance or recover from its effects. Number four, craving or a strong desire or urge to use the substance. Number five, recurrent substance use resulting in a failure to fulfill major role obligations at work, school or home. Number six, continued substance use despite having persistent or recurrent social or interpersonal problems caused or exacerbated by the effects of substance. Number seven, important social, occupational or recreational activities are given up or reduced because of substance use. Number eight, recurrent substance use in situations in which it is physically hazardous. Number nine, continued substance use despite knowledge of having a persistent or recurrent physical or psychological problem that is likely to have been caused or exacerbated by that substance. Number 10, tolerance as defined by either of the following. A, a need to markedly increase amounts of substance to achieve intoxication or desired effect or B, markedly diminish effect with continued use of the same amount of substance. Number 11, withdrawal as manifested by either of the following. A, the characteristic withdrawal syndrome for the substance or the substance or closely related substance is taken to relieve or avoid withdrawal symptoms. Now, let us talk about the levels of severity. DSM-5 classifies the substance abuse disorder on the basis of severity graded on the number of criteria met. A mild substance use disorder is characterized by presence of two or three symptoms. The presence of four or five symptoms indicates a moderate and six or more symptoms indicate a severe substance use disorder. This brings us to the last topic of today's lecture, that is categories of substance use disorders. DSM-5 lists certain drugs under the substance use disorders, which are as follows. First, alcohol use disorder. Alcohol use disorder is a condition characterized by an impaired ability to stop or control alcohol consumption despite adverse social, occupational or health consequences. It encompasses conditions that some people refer to as alcohol abuse, alcohol dependence, alcohol addiction and alcoholism. Alcohol is a toxic substance and a depressant which slows down the activity of the central nervous system and may impair a person's motor functioning, decision making, ability, memory, judgment, concentration and coordination. People, especially in the Western countries, often consume alcohol on various occasions. Due to this reason, there appears to be no clear distinction between social and problem drinking. According to the World Health Organization, alcohol consumption contributes to around 3 million deaths each year globally. Alcohol use can have severe effects on the health of a person. Heavy alcohol use can cause stomach inflammation, liver damage, nerve and brain damage, impotence, tuberculosis, pneumonia, heart failure, forgetfulness and cirrhosis of the liver. Alcohol use by women during pregnancy can lead to their children being born with a condition named fetal alcohol syndrome. According to the World Health Organization, Alcohol consumption is responsible for about 300 million deaths per year and about 5.1% of the global burden of disease is attributable to alcohol use. Second is caffeine use disorder. Caffeine is a natural stimulant which is most commonly found in tea, coffee, cacao plants. A stimulant works by increasing the activity of our central nervous system. 
induces alertness and wakefulness, elevates our mood and increases motor activity. Caffeine is also associated with the increased circulation of chemicals such as cortisol and adrenaline, which in turn increases our heart rates, elevate blood pressure and boost energy supplies. One of the major beverages containing caffeine consumed worldwide is coffee. Some people can't even think of starting their day without coffee. Apart from coffee, tea is also preferred drink of choice in some parts of the world. Experts suggest that we should restrict our caffeine intake to not more than 400 mg per day. As the higher levels of caffeine can have serious repercussions on the physical and mental health of a person. Higher doses of caffeine can produce restlessness, nervousness, insomnia, gastrointestinal distress, irregular heartbeat and anxiety. High caffeine intake is associated with complications during pregnancy as well. Caffeine also produces certain negative effects after an individual discontinues its use. That is, withdrawal symptoms like headache, fatigue, irritability, depressed mood, difficulty concentrating, and flu-like symptoms. Due to the lack of research on the disorder, DSM-5 has included caffeine use disorder in Section 3 for further study. For the diagnosis of a caffeine use disorder, three criteria must be fulfilled persistent desire or unsuccessful effort to cut down caffeine, continued caffeine use despite knowledge of physical or psychological problems, and characteristic caffeine withdrawal or caffeine use to avoid withdrawal symptoms. Then comes cannabis use disorder. The DSM-5 defines cannabis use disorder as a diagnosis given by problematic cannabis use leading to clinically significant impairment or distress. The hemp plant, cannabis sativa, is native to warm regions of the world. The collective name for the drugs made from different types of hemp is called cannabis. The strongest of these is hashish. The least potent is marijuana. The most popular variety of cannabis made from buds, crushed leaves and flowering tops of hemp plants. It is also commonly referred to as weed, pot, herb, grass, ganja and Mary Jane. Cannabis is a psychoactive substance available in a variety of strengths because its potency is affected by climate in which it is cultivated. The cannabis plant contains nearly 540 chemical substances, the most harmful of which is tetrahydrocannabinol, THC. THC is considered responsible for intoxicating effects of cannabis. The higher THC content, the more powerful the cannabis. It's commonly consumed by smoking, but can also be used as an ingredient in food and beverages. When smoked, these chemicals pass into bloodstream via the lungs. The effects of substance are experienced immediately by the person, which may include euphoria, relaxation, heightened sensory perception, impaired judgment, altered perception of reality and time, and increased appetite. The effects experienced may vary among individuals and instead of having euphoric experiences, some people may experience anxiety, fear, distrust or panic. Large doses of cannabis may induce acute psychosis, including hallucinations and delusions as well. While THC is considered to be extremely harmful, research suggests it has potential medicinal effects for pain, nausea, insomnia and reduced appetite. Hence, many people use medical marijuana as a medicine for pain relief, muscle spasms and sleep issues. It's also used by cancer patients to ease their symptoms. Medicinal marijuana cannot cure the disease. It's just used to ease certain symptoms so that a person can function effectively. Despite having certain medicinal properties, it can be highly addictive substance. 
consuming cannabis in large amounts may have long-term deteriorating effects on the physical as well as mental health of a person, including chronic bronchitis, pneumonia, severe cyclic nausea and vomiting, impaired learning and memory, complications during pregnancy and various psychological disorders such as schizophrenia, depression and anxiety. Cannabis remains the most widely used drug worldwide. In the yearly report by the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime, by the year 2020, most of the 4% of the global population aged between 15 to 64, that is 209 million people, had used cannabis in the past year. The prevalence of past year cannabis use has increased by 8% from 3.8% in 2010, while the number of people who used cannabis in the past year increased by 23%, from 170 million in 2010, partly owing to an increase in the global population. The prevalence of use of cannabis varies widely by region and is highest in North America, Australia, New Zealand and West Africa. Compared with adults, the past year prevalence of cannabis use is reported to be higher among adolescents. That is 5.8% in those aged 15 to 16. Then comes hallucinogen-related disorder. Hallucinogens are substances that cause profound distortions in a person's perception of reality. Hallucinogens consist of a varied group of substances with different chemical compositions and modes of actions, which are classified together due to the similar effects they have on an individual, including alterations in perception, mood and cognition. They are also known as psychedelics, meaning mind and soul manifesting. They can be either man-made or can be derived from plants or mushrooms. They are generally divided into two types, classic hallucinogens, including LSD, psilocybin, peyote, DMT, and masculine, and dissociative drugs, including ketamine, PCB, and dextromethorphan. In addition to perceptual distortions produced by hallucinogens, dissociative drugs also produce a sense of detachment from oneself and the surroundings of a person. Hallucinogens work by disrupting the communications between chemicals in the brain like serotonin, which regulates the mood, sleep, hunger and body temperature of an individual. The effects of hallucinogens generally begin within 20 to 90 minutes of intake and can last up to 12 hours. An individual may experience increased heart rate, nausea, intense sensory experiences and changes in the perception of time, increased blood pressure, loss of appetite, dry mouth, sleep disturbances, panic, excessive sweating, paranoia, bizarre behaviors, memory loss, seizures and trouble breathing. Continued use of hallucinogens can have severe long-term effects on the individual such as speech problems, memory loss, weight loss, anxiety, depression and suicidal thoughts, which will depressions and paranoia and persisting hallucinations. DSM-5 recognizes two substance use disorders under the hallucinogen related disorders, cyclosidine use disorder and other hallucinogen use disorder. According to the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime, there are 20 million estimated users of hallucinogen substance in 2020. There have been multiple surveys that suggest the overall reduced use of hallucinogens, but this can be most likely a result of COVID-19 related closures of the venues where hallucinogens are typically consumed, such as nightclubs. Fifth is inhalant use disorder. The DSM-5 defines inhalant use disorder as a problematic pattern 
of a hydrocarbon based inhalant substance that alters the mental state and lead to clinically significant impairment or distress. The term inhalants refer to the various substances that people typically take only by inhaling. These substances include solvents which are liquids that become gas at room temperature, aerosol sprays, gases and nitrites which are prescription medication for chest disease. These substances are inhaled to produce psychoactive effects in an individual. Various common household items such as shoe polish, glue, hairspray, nail polish remover, paint thinner, lighter fluid and nitrous oxide, laughing gas are used abusively as inhalants. The inhalants slow down our brain activity and affect our central nervous system. The high produced by inhalants is often compared to the alcohol intoxication. The short term effects produced by these substances include slurred speech, lack of coordination, euphoria, vomiting, dizziness, hallucinations and delusions. Liver and kidney damage, hearing loss, bone marrow damage, loss of coordination and limb spasms, sleep disturbances, tremors, delayed behavioral development and brain damage are some of the long-term effects of using inhalants. Inhalant use disorder are common in younger populations between 15 to 16 years of age. Sixth is opioid use disorder. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder defines opioid use disorder as a problematic pattern of opioid use leading to problems of distress. Opioid are the class of drugs which are derived from or mimic the natural components of opium taken from the sap of poppy plant. Opioids include illegal drug, heroin, fentanyl and prescription based painkillers such as oxycodone, hydrocodone, codeine and morphine. For many years, morphine and heroin were used widely for their pain relieving abilities. Heroin was even used as a medicine to treat cough. But later, research revealed that these drugs proved to be highly addictive and by 1917, heroin was declared illegal. Certain synthetic drugs derived from opioids known as narcotics are still used as medication for coughing, diarrhea and relieving pain. Despite having such benefits, opioids have various side effects as well. Most of the opioids are smoked, inhaled, snorted or injected by needle. A person develops a tolerance for the medication, hence requiring higher and higher doses every time. Besides, opioid can induce drowsiness, constipation, euphoria, nausea, vomiting and slowed breathing. Opioid use remains widespread. An estimation made by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime states that there are 61.3 million people who had used opioids worldwide in 2020. This includes people who use opiates and people who use pharmaceutical opioids for non-medical purposes and corresponds to 1.2% of the global population aged 15 to 64. The majority of people who use opioids are men, an estimated 85% based on data from 26 countries. Seventh is sedative, hypnotic or anxiolytic use disorder. Sedative, hypnotic or anxiolytic use disorder is a substance use disorder characterized by repeated use of substances including benzodiazepines, benzodiazepine-like drugs, barbiturates and barbiturate-like hypnotics despite significant problems associated with them. Sedative hypnotic drugs, also referred to as anxiolytics or anti-anxiety, are class of depressants that slow down the activity of the brain. These drugs have a calming effect when taken in lower amounts and higher doses of drug can have hypnotic and sleep-inducing effect on the person. 
The two most commonly used sedative hypnotics are benzodiazepines, which are used to treat anxiety and sleep disorders, and barbiturates, which are used to, for treating seizures. Larger doses of these drugs have similar effects as heavy drinking. A high dose of barbiturates can lead to respiratory problems, coma, and even death. Benzodiazepines although relatively safer can cause memory impairment, poor motor coordination and confusion. Then comes stimulant use disorder. Stimulant use disorder is a substance use disorder characterized by a problematic pattern of stimulant use leading to clinically significant impairment or distress. Stimulants are substances that increase the activity of our central nervous system leading to increasing blood pressure alertness and sped up thinking and behavior. Drugs in this category include cocaine, amphetamines and cathinones. Stimulants cause rapid weight loss, cardiovascular diseases, respiratory problems, reduced appetite, increased alertness, paranoia, anxiety, seizures, panic and aggression. Higher doses of stimulants can lead to coma or even death. Cocaine and amphetamines are regarded as the two most harmful stimulants. They give a high of 4 to 6 hours to a person. The withdrawal symptoms of these drugs include severe hallucinations. The person may also develop acute schizophrenia or depression. Cocaine and amphetamines are costly drugs, often leading to a depletion of one's resources. According to the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, there are an estimated 34 million previous year users of amphetamines in 2020. An increase in use can be seen from 2019 to 2020 and during the last decade. A relatively stable situation can be seen from 2010 to 2020. Also, there are 21 million estimated users of cocaine in 2020 and a long-term steady increase in the number of cocaine users from 2010 to 2019. However, in 2020, this trend was halted, with some countries reporting decreases in use, which was likely the result of measures taken to control the COVID-19 pandemic. Ninth is tobacco use disorder. Tobacco use disorder is a substance use disorder characterized by a problematic pattern of tobacco or nicotine use leading to clinically significant impairment or distress. The disorder is common among individuals who use cigarettes or smokeless tobacco. Nicotine is the addicting agent present in tobacco. It stimulates the central nervous system and a person feels relaxed and calm for a while. Tobacco use is associated with high blood pressure, increased risk of heart disease and cancer. Tobacco use has severe withdrawal symptoms such as restlessness, insomnia, depression, anxiety, increased appetite and weight gain. Nicotine is a highly addictive substance and has high relapse rates. DSM-5 includes another category of disorders called other substance use disorders. The diagnosis is used when all the criteria related to substance use disorders are met but the substances are not mentioned in the list of disorders. According to the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime in the year 2000, around a third, that is 33.3% of the global population both sexes combined and age group of 15 years and older, there were current users of some form of tobacco. And by the year 2015, this rate of tobacco use had declined about a quarter, that is 24.9% of the global population. Assuming that current efforts in tobacco control are maintained in all countries, the rate is projected to decline further to around a fifth of 20.9% of the global population of 2025. This brings us to the end of today's lecture. Thank you.